the Team Liquid Super Brawl for seeding points, not only, but a sweet cash prize. Yeah. Pretty decent. Two twenty-two fifty prize pool. Thousand dollars for first place. Seven fifty for second. Two hundred fifty for third and fourth. Seeding points through all top eight teams. I believe it's eighty for first, fifty-five for second, and twenty-five for. I don't know. I can't check. Something to that effect. Sounds right. But let us get to this draft now. This is going to be complexity versus the plays, and Zeratul is going to be that first ban. The plays, do they respect Kerrigan? We've seen how formidable that hero really is. It's so fun to watch Max Kerrigan, though. Just let it happen. It's fun to watch. Yeah, so, uh, it's just so much confidence, you know? If you've played Kerrigan, you guys know. it's You can get into the thick of things and think you have a really nice maelstrom, and you're like, oh, I, I died so fast. Why did I die so fast? And uh, it really shows that there's some, uh, some good argument, but you have to really know the ins and outs of the hero to make that work. All and right. We'll be on Avatar. I think that's probably a smart play, but this allows them to get Kerrigan early in the draft. They're going to go for Sylvanas. Hmm. Sylvanas, I would say, is a fairly neutral pick. Uh, it will be comparable to grabbing Tassadar first. It doesn't really show your hand too much. I wouldn't say that Sylvanas is necessarily really strong on this map, unless the Vikings are picked up. Yeah, uh, hmm. could be something that complexity is setting themselves up. Yeah, it's not a bad idea to pick up the, the Vikings for either team. I mean, in this cursed hollow, we talk about the implications that exist with just being able to soak multiple lanes during the tribute being up. It's the, a pretty big potential. The implication. Mm. Plays with the Jaina still on the table, of course. Illidan still on the table. Could be Illidan, Jaina. That seems to be a common pair between the two. Yeah. Uh, okay. There's the Illidan. And the Jane. Oh, no, Tassadar. Huh. I just called it, but I was wrong. Hmm. If I were feeling confident in the Vikings play, I'd love to see more of that. I think that's a really cool strategy. Let the Vikings soak, say, top and mid. And then the rest of the team, all four members, shove out the remaining lane super hard. And it can be a very difficult thing to respond to. It can. Brightwing, Pro Global Presence, and there's the Jaina. Jaina. So now, probably not looking to secure the Vikings. Otherwise, they would have looked to grab it early. You think this will be a Kerrigan bin here? Or are they just not worried at all? Because that's a pretty good team to have a Kerrigan. Yeah, if they they're able to like lock this out with uh, Murd and Kerrigan. Oh, Ooh. God. Oh. Especially with Jaina, yeah. I don't think they'd get both, but even if they got the single Kerrigan with a new I Barak, imagine one of those two will be banned. Yeah. We will see. I can't imagine what else they would want to try to get rid of. There's a promote a piece on either side. I don't think either team's going to be looking for Johanna Asmodan. Johanna could probably still be picked up. I don't think that it's a priority for either team at this point. What else are we missing? Anything else? No, that's that's pretty much it. Unless the plays are feeling still threatened by the Sylvanas Vikings, they could ban that out as well. I can't see there being any other need to ban out other heroes. Yeah, they're just making sure they cover all options right now. They're really thinking about this because the ban, you know, it arguably is the most important part of this draft for them right now. What they can deny in complexity, of course, we talked about Kerrigan being one of the bigger priorities, but maybe they just go for one of the big warriors, Anubarak, uh, Muradin. Beyond that, I don't think anything else really makes sense. Really dipping into this. Yeah, they are. It is Muradin. Okay. okay, we figured that might be the case. The warrior that would pair up the best. I don't think that's necessarily the critical part, especially if they're considering going for Kerrigan. Still, Brightwing Kerrigan is not really the best. No. The f the f offensively, it's fine. Yeah. You can you can get the pull and then right into a polymorph to prevent escape. That's fine. I have no problem with that. But the, the, the issue is the defense. Right. When you're trying Keeping to keep Kerrigan alive after yeah. she dives into the enemy team, that can be tricky to do. And that might be why we could just see Anubarak picked up as instead. But they're going to ban on Mouth. Okay. Uh, quite interesting. That might be a targeted. Yeah, but Uther's still available. I don't think that like Mule is something that they're really trying to deny at this point. So I think they just say, well, we know plays and really likes to huh. run Mouth. So this should be Uther. Yeah, I like Uther. They don't need to prioritize him necessarily. 
Well, let's look at the Assassins. Falstead, a very common pickup for this map. Kael'thas still on the table. It would be a great pick, so there's KT. And Anubarak. They're, they're actually worried about Anubarak. It's more of a denial, I think, uh, grabbing him, because he just works so well. And, you know, they, they took they took Muradin away, and they grabbed a great warrior. I think that's pretty smart. Could be Johanna Kerrigan. Could be Johanna... I would Johanna be will be the warrior pick. I would be okay with Johanna Garrigan here, honestly. Johanna Falstad, Johanna... Hmm, that would be fine, too. Depends just on how aggressive they They just wouldn't have a melee assassin, and we, they tend to run melee assassin with McIntyre. Yeah. Ugh, cat's getting so huge. So huge. <laughs> Makes she, a loud thud on the yeah, ground when I dropped just, her down. Like, <laughs> threw her. I did not throw her! <laughs> <laughs> Johanna! All right, so we knew that would be the case. But what is going to be the extra amount of damage they're going to pick up? There's no way they can really deny supports, can they? If they grabbed Uther, all that does is just force them to take Rhaegar. It's not enough of an advantage to run double support. Right. Uh, I don't think it would be the greatest. Falstad or Kerrigan. It's one of the two. It's got to be. I, I, I would not like them running Asmodan. Maelstrom no. kind of made it work on this no, map, but that was very particular. Like and yeah, I I would prefer Toronto over Asmodan at this point. Um, yeah, I think it's got to be Falstad or, or Kerrigan. Now the other options, Vala doesn't just have the same kind of synergy. She's not a bad pick. It's just when you think about the rest of the composition, doesn't line up as well. Yes, Reign of Vengeance, you can make a case for it, uh, but they're just gonna go for Vikings. It's that's just uh, gonna go for Vikings. No, they have the Sylvanas Jake. Yeah, I. Don't know why we didn't talk about that. We did talk about it. I forgot about it. We did talk about it. It was just something that I wouldn't have expected them to leave to the last pick. That's what's surprising about it to me. Like, if you're going to try to plan to go for the strategy, maybe they just wait out the options. Like, oh, we need some more damage. Like, you know, Viking's still there. Mm -hmm. still do that. It's not like something that they were trying to build around, but they ended up grabbing it anyway. So this is going to pr provide for very interesting early game. We'll get into explaining that as it occurs, but... I'm trying to remember who plays the Vikings on Complexity's team. Yeah, I I don't... It could actually be Mac, honestly. We'll find out. Uh, but, Uther, the final pick here for the plays. Okay. Uh, well, the, well, that will be our two teams. Game number one here in the lower semifinals of this yes. tournament. Yes, yes, yes. And we're going to give the players the go-ahead to start this game. Guys, once more, make sure you follow the channel if you want to be eligible for the raffles that have been happening all day. And uh, Tuesday, just wants to plug this once more, we're doing a raffle here on this channel for a Heroes of the Storm. What mouse time Tuesday, Jake? Pad. I haven't decided the time in the evening. How are you going to tell these people I know, to, s to join I the, it, the channel? The hard, the hard part about that is we don't know what the servers are going to be like because it's going to be beta. So it's going to be Thursday, uh, Tuesday night, uh, probably around 8 p.m. Eastern. I think that's what I'm shooting for, maybe 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, but it is patch day, so we don't know how long these servers will be down. But all you have to do is be a follower and active in the chat during the give out of the raffle, and you have a chance to win that, much like the way the skins have been working. But Kubi, let's get back to this game. Yep. What do you think about these drafts? It's going to be Hans on the Vikings, by the way. Flanked on... Uh who is going to be filling out that role? McIntyre will be playing the Sylvanas. Uh, I got. I got to say, I like. I like complexity's draft. I, I like the concept of Sylvanas and Vikings together. Yeah, especially, uh, especially on a map like Curse Hollow. I think it's a strong pickup. In terms of what the plays have grabbed, they have the Illidan. They have Uther with Illidan. That's always strong. Yeah, I know. Both the teams are strong. It really depends on how well this early game goes for. Complexity. I think that they have uh, a lot that could be very scary. And if it's if this four-man push in the bottom lane is executed well enough, and then they rotate to other lanes, they or what we're talking about, guys. Here is there, there could be a three-minute fort taken down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, like maybe even before the first tribute. Like it depends on like how well it's defended from the enemy team. But Well, we're going to see game number one here in the loser semifinals loading up with complexity on the blue side. Let me fix my overlay. Kubi, take it away. Sure. Complexity will be having McIntyre on Sylvanas. Trouble is going to be playing Jaina. Caterpillar on the Johanna. Blinks will be on 
the right wing and of course Hans we mentioned is going to be on the Vikings and we can see that they are split up yes. and poised to execute this strategy so we'll talk about that once we introduce the plays. And on the plays it's going to be Zeus playing Tassadar standing on his carpet, Pirate Rum on Illidan Aragi also on a carpet playing as Kale Foss, Daihu on a noob Arak and Lex Uther. What'd you guess? He's playing Uther. So a lot of carpets. There's only two carpets there Jake. There's, there's a lot of cards though. Three, three card pits. Oh, you really did that? I did. Oh, wow. What a cop-out. Okay, <laughs> fine. So, again, we talked about this strategy. They yeah. weren't ready for top lane. Look, they're not here at all. This first tower is probably going to fall before they even get here with the rotation. Making their way up the scouting drone in beautiful positioning by Brightwing. Going to see the rotation happening. Top four just barely not falling. F tower. Tower. <laughs> I was going to say, wow, they uh, <laughs> didn't get a quite chance to look at that. 30-second fort. They need to know Ridiculous. what they're doing there. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you're, you're right, this is uh, the type of thing, and the scouting drone will have a lot of effect. It's something that will be removed from Brightwing in this next patch, or at least if changes in the PTR remain consistent with what is shown. And Daihu actually overextending a little bit. Looked away for a second, boom, he is gone. Good night, good sweet prince. And uh, yeah, Vikings are doing their thing. Soaking two lanes, Hans got Eric the Swift in the middle, and then Olaf the Oaf in the bottom with Balog the buff. Paylog, the buff. Those are their official titles. Oh, by I the didn't way. know that. Okay, good yeah, to know. Good. McIntyre actually wow. falling very, very low in the top lane. They're just trying to get as much damage in as possible as fast as they can. So there's a couple ways to play this strategy. You can take out the f the towers very quickly and then rotate, or you can continue to push really hard in and take a four. It's a bit riskier, but you get yourself that huge experience lead really early on. And. We see that. I mean, it's it's quite even right now, but uh, as these waves do fall down to the Vikings when they soak, and I mean, the, the wave clear is a little bit in favor of, of uh, the side on the plays because of Illidan in the middle lane. But as we see this damage continue to go forth, they will rotate to another lane. The Vikings will switch, and they will just slowly but surely get a slight lead. Yeah, probably a big reason why Eric... The Swift is in the middle lane. Mm -hmm. If they do want to rotate, he can get up to the top lane quite a bit faster to continue soaking. It looks to be the plan. They just want to hold that experience lead. Actually, Brightwing can remain in the top. That's why we see that, and then she can face it down. Yep, and they're just going to clean this up and then continue the pushing into this middle lane. Wouldn't be too surprised to see Eric rotate, and yes, he's going to do just that right now. I think Brightwing just wanted to get this one scouting drone down so that he would have safe passage. Yeah, not only that, but promotes as well, just to make sure that they can ah. continue to have some pressure in the top lane with Brightwing. And then, like I said, she can phase shift down at a moment's notice to help with that push. Yeah, as she sees fit. But already the damage being dealt in the middle lane, we see they're just throwing it down the Condemn, pulling in the Daihu, but not quite enough. Uh, for anything to happen this early in the game, slowly we see the experience. About a half level lead in favor of complexity. Okay, so then the next interesting part of this type of transition is in effect. We do have, of course, the soak from the Vikings, and really the Vikings team should look to stall this tribute as long as possible. They have all the soak in all of the lanes. Uh, yes, with the exception. No, even mid, they have it. Hmm. So really, they need to just be looking to stall this as long as possible. And you will see this experience lead right now just under a level. The longer they hold this, the bigger that lead gets. Oh, the Haunting Wave will just barely clip Daihu, stalling it out like you mentioned. They just That's what the name of the game is. It's not about winning this tribute fight. If they can, that would be great. And we do see Lex with getting quite low with the Invenom. The heal yeah. does come out, but Pirate Rum not going to be able to have that so heal. Low and Sylvanas does go so forward. So low in mana as well. Lex is just not afforded the opportunity to heal. He has to back out. He probably only has enough mana oh. for one. Oh. This die who ends up falling as well. So huge advantage to complexity at this point. Not only do they have this Free superior down, soak, Tooby. they have more than a level lead at this point, and they will net themselves the first tribute. Talk about a start to the game. I mean, that first tribute, yep. they made that look so dominant, and they're taking it away yep. so quickly. They're already down in this bottom lane as well. They may as well just continue pushing hold that experience lead even further up. Look how fast they're able to take these towers out with the disable from Sylvanas being a real big deal, a yeah. real critical part of the strategy. And the Vikings with that soak, I mean, every advantage in their hands, throwing that scouting drone in the middle of the lane, giving them that vision. Yeah, they just want to know how much of a threat is sitting behind this wall before they actually break it down and can see. And if it's just going to be a new barack, well, let's do it. We'll push in. We'll try to take this fort, put at least as much damage on it as we can. And uh, another great scouting drone. This is so smart. Just trying to cover all of the potential flank paths. As long as they can see who's coming in from the top side, they'll push in real hard. 
Yeah, well, right now, I mean, that fort is looking like it's in a tough place, and this tribute conveniently spawning right where they already are positioned. The Vikings don't have to rotate lanes. They can continue to soak as they have been, which is just going to give even more of an experience gosh. lead to complexity. Look at this push. Yeah, they're not even trying to contest this at this point. Daihu will dive in, but again, the longer these types of strategies or longer these tribute fights yeah. get stalled out, the better it is going to be for complexity in this level, almost two-level lead. No, it is a two-level lead. Yeah. yeah, at this point, and they don't have a talent advantage per se. Ooh, but a nice gravity lapse. We do see Caterpillar taking a fair amount of damage, but they're trying to lock him down. Daihu gets pulled in by the Condemned. Look how low Uther is forced to heal himself. Haunting Wave going forward towards Pirate Rum. And oh, the oh, slow, slow yeah. from Jaina. Okay, but he's actually back. Bouncing back, he's able to take out Trouble. But, uh, you know, they will, you know, they're going to take have this takedown go the way of the place. But still, look, again, the level experience, they're just about to hit level 10. They won't probably be able to take this tribute, but that's okay. They'll trade up one and one. If they have a two level lead at, at level 10, McIntyre is not going to be able to get oh, out. Not quite yeah. able. It's a good thing that Brightwing didn't end up getting yeah. that phase shift in in time. Would have been in a tight spot there, but level 10 about to be reached with the superior yes. soak provided by the Lost Vikings. Watermelon to blink heal, longboat raid, and two more Wailing Arrow followed by the Blessed Shield of Johanna. So there goes the elemental immediately in Pirate Rum, picking him off. Ragi should be able to get out of here, no problem. I don't know. The water elemental is going to slow quite a bit, but there are no stuns and Daihu Ooh. just leaping in. Oh my goodness, just a second. Hold on. Do they have vision? Anything they can throw wow. the wall to get that sight? No. The impale. Not quite. Actually, it was there just in time, I yeah, think. That was big. All right, nice plays across the map. Brightwing is soaking. She also has that global presence available. They just want to take every possible advantage it's right now. so annoying with these promotes in the bottom lane. All right, what does the plays have to do to counter this? We've been talking all about this really cool strategy that is the Vikings splitting up with Sylvanas, and it's, we don't get to see it all often. That's why we're really excited about it. But what is the counter to it? Do you have to get super aggressive and just try to pick off the Vikings as much as possible to deny Soak? It's so hard. They just kind of have to hit their heroics right now. Like, yeah, picking up the Vikings is nice, but they come back so very quickly, Kubi. So it's it, they're in a tight place, but it looks like Araki is going to try to do that. We do have Balog in the bottom lane by himself just sitting here soaking. The gravity lapse goes down, followed by the full yeah, combo. He's going to fall. He he's about to got the run. Oh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> wow, he's going to get out. Okay. Color me impressed. All right. Kubi's cat just trying to assault us while we're trying to observe a video game, but she has been handled. Oh, my goodness. Cat is too huge. All right. Into the top lane. This is their, their sights are set. The final fort trying to continue to hold that experience lead. Heroics have just been hit. And this is hopefully the turning point, at least for, you know, the place to start battling back to show... Uh, that they're not out of this game. They're just going to fall over to this constant push and soak from the Vikings. They have the Phoenix, Divine Shield, Metamorphosis, Archon, and the Locust Swarm. What is going to be their setup for the big hmm. team fights here? That's that's the real question. Yeah. I think they can ha afford to have aggressive play from Anubarak. He can dive in. Uh, he has the Divine Shield to back him up if things get a little bit dicey. This is a bit risky, though, Kubi. We see they are going to catch wind of this quite low right now. Johanna can just walk in. You can't stun her out. If she uses that passive, and she's not even going to have to do that. Good They're deal. going away. We do see Divine Shield used on the Metamorphosis Illidan in the back line, but Caterpillar is going to try to peel. We do see Jaina uh -oh. able to take her out. Zeus gets oh, pulled no. in. The entire team pulled in by the Condemn. A big deal. Also, the big deal is that the Vikings are now just about all present. Olaf sort of stumbling in at the last second. This is going to be another pickup on Aragi and we're going to have the Golem taken. I don't see why not. They're probably going to try to finish off this takedown of the Lex Uther. Not worth, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, we've talked about chasing Uther before. Is it ever really worth it if it's going to cost you too much time? Boss, like you said, being picked up, and that's going to give them a curse immediately after the... the Gods of Cursed Hollow. <laughs> the gods. Giving it to The me. Raven Lord, man. <laughs> the Raven in. Lord. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so curse, a boss. We'll be able to take out this final fort. Complexity looking incredibly strong. Yeah, in game this first game. Three level of advantage too. Finals. Like it's it's looking quite nice for them and uh, this boss will just chip at this fort very quickly. They actually look like they want to escort it. Jaina went back to base to restore her mana, so it is a 4v5 push, but look at this flank here out of the Lost Vikings. That's what the Lost Vikings are all about. They do still have that longboat raid there and it has, has been popped. I don't think they'll be able to pick up any takedowns off of this, but you got to remember the structures are not firing back at this point. Complexity can get as aggressive over this wall as they please. 
Yeah, look at that wall. This back keep is just getting decimated. The Golem, the Giant, and all five members of Complexity. Illidan trying to handle some of the, the other push because the curse, of course, is in every single lane. And the Wailing Arrow does connect. Tassadar falls immediately. Dai, who has to charge away. Aragi not going to be so uh -oh. lucky. The uh -oh. Polymorph with that Arcane Flare. No, not quite enough. That's a big deal. Trummel is sort of dealing with Pirate Rum. Oh. And the Poison oh. actually has forced to use the Metamorphosis. He will be able to retreat, but he only has six seconds before uh, he needs to get those forts firing back to defend. I think he's going to fall. This might actually I think be one game. of the fastest games that we've had in this entire Sub tournament. Sub 10 minute. Can they do it? They have nine seconds no, to eliminate cannot. the score. Five. Four. Oh, I don't think they can do it. Three. No, it's not going to happen. Oh. But a convincing win for Complexity. Just showing the strength of Sylvanas and the Lost Vikings on this map. You know, this type of strategy is also really strong on Garden of Tar. I'd say those are the two big maps that you can pull this on. And uh, we mentioned the possibility of this in the beginning of the draft, and I think that's maybe why one of these teams, or the, one of these teams, the players should have taken it a bit more seriously, yeah. banned it out, or you know something to that effect. Yeah, uh, a bit of a a misstep, allowing for Viking Savannah's uncursed hollowed, probably the best possible yeah. pair to have on that map, and we saw exactly why. Just mm -hmm. they got a very early lead in that first tribute fight. That really just kind of yep. spelt the rest of the game. It just kind of. Told sure. the story. And uh, props to Hans, too. Yeah. No takedowns. I, th I don't think that counts full or it doesn't. decimal takedowns, but at least he didn't, you know, maybe only lost one or two. I'd say that was a considerably better performance than the last time I saw him playing Vikings. So he stepped his game up quite a bit, and his soak was pretty much immaculate throughout the beginning portion of the game. Rotations were good. Didn't have too many early takedowns to force the Vikings to rotate to the other lanes. Mm. So props to that. Uh, good job, Hans, on that. So improved. Always like to see that. Yeah, all right, guys. Well, we're going to set up game number two between the plays and complexity. And we'll yeah. be back in just a few.
shattered frame of mind Is that you could always stay We can wait right here and play Until somehow you can find A slightly better frame of mind Alrighty guys, welcome back here to Complexity vs. The Plays with Solid and Kubi at the Team Liquid Super Brawl Lower Bracket Semi-Finals. Let's go to Game 2 Draft. He's got it. Wow. That was like 10 straight seconds of rattling off. Bam. Got all of it. Had to think, man. Well done, sir. Brain, brain power. Okay. First pick, first man going to Complexity. They take out Jaina. They know there's no pressure on the... Yes. Yes. The aggression of complexity is here. Now, this is actually something that complexity got really known for. Is their aggression specifically on Haunted Minds with Kerrigan. This is kind of where it was all born. If we go back into some Heroes of the Storm history, they actually ran this style with initially the, some of the first builds were Tyrande to Tastar. No support. Half supports. In your face. Get out of my game. Is this where the... Uh the famous Haunted Minds game yes, was the angry Tempo Storm. Angry complexity. They beat Tempo Storm in about eight minutes. Yeah, that was quick. <laughs> <laughs> On Haunted Minds. They just were just like, we are we're, we're, we're not happy with you yeah. and we want to ruin your life. So the interesting thing about this the pick ban is that on this map in particular, we've mentioned it in the past, Sylvanas too strong to allow through the ban phase. So right. complexity, they say oh, there's no pressure, we can just take out Jaina, something we don't that's actually a bit surprising to see that the Jaina was taken away. But look at these first pick by the plays. It's completely catered to what they know. Compl or the plays grab Tassadar or Uther because they're like, oh my goodness, we know Kerrigan's coming. We got to defend against this. Yeah. But this leaves Johanna open. And we've seen Johanna and Kerrigan be actually just terrifying. Uh, paired with other damage dealers, there's still plenty of good options. Yep. But the Sylvanas ban, backing up just a little bit, the Sylvanas oh, ban sure. allows complexity to get that first pick in character. Yeah. Because right. they, they knew very safely that there was no way the plays would not ban out Sylvanas. And if they did, well, they'll have to scoop up Sylvanas if Kerrigan was banned out. Yep. And now they have a ridiculous push with their golems. So that's something that wasn't going to happen. They knew they'd be able to get Kerrigan very early. We have Heart of the Swarm ladies very quickly. Hot girls! That is going to be Zagara. We've talked about this as well. Zagara is quite strong in this map, especially for the early game push. Able to soak up a lot of tower shots. We've even <laughs> seen teams grabbing the... Uh, what is uh, what's that level one roach? No, corpse feeders. Corpse corpse feeders. Feeders. Thirty percent less damage from non-heroic sources, mm. which means obviously very good, you know, pushing ability, able to soak up those tower shots, let your team push further. Well, this is odd. Malfurion mule. That's a. They're going for. I mean, it's it's either well, going to be right wing. It's not or just mule, but this will be in the loon's grace Malfurion with just those massive roots to help lock you down. You are. You're, I mean, one cleanse, sure. Uh, are you going to draft bright wing Tassadar Uther? I don't think so. Maybe. Probably it's not. Two promotes. Promote is strong strong in this map. Well. They see the threat of Johanna. I, I mean, it's okay to for complexity to also run bird in too. It's not. Even a new Barak fits well into this. I'm not sure that the Johanna steal is the best thing for them to have taken away. But what is? That's really the... I mean, I should follow that up and say, hmm. what really is the thing to take away? So I think Johanna is smart, but does it does it change? I mean, Muradin's hmm. still a big option, so I feel like they have to they have to grab Muradin here. Yeah. But there's oh. still a new Barak. Yeah. Well, Zara, uh, also Zeratul uh, Abathur could still be grabbed ah, as well. Ah, that's, that's actually a good idea. Hmm. Do I like that? I don't think it's terrible. <laughs> it's not terrible. <laughs> I don't know if I like it, though. I mean, you can technically get the soak on the top side with one of the lanes at the very least while you're representing in the bottom of the mines while those are active with the symbiote ability. Plus, just Zeratul and Abathur together are a very strong combination. A possibility to take what else is there. Uh, you could deny the, the Muradin, like you were mentioning, force complexity to take 
Nubarak. That may not be the most uh, impactful denial. I think a Nubarak would also fit fine into complexity strategy, especially yeah. considering it's more summons. That's th like Murden's technically the better pairing with uh, with Kerrigan, but the Nubarak fits better on the map. There he is. Pick him up. There's really no way. Beetle, Beetle having the push. Unless they take both. They could, but then they have no damage, right? Double support, double warrior. It's not out of the question for their drafting, but it's still very odd. And uh, they're going to go with False Dead. So this will signal a, a definite pickup on Muradin, but who do you think they're going to go for their damage dealer? Hmm. Hold on. Uh, KT is a little rough on this map, like you mentioned, I for reasons it, previous yeah. that he's yeah. uh, someone who scales better into the late game. That said, Vala? Yeah, I, I like Vala myself. You can uh, stick her in the bottom lane. Always got to talk about those heroes that are better to mm -hmm. stick in the bottom lane. In this case, it will be probably Tassadar for the plays if they're looking to get aggressive. I think, well, that's, that's hard to say. I think they're both fairly even so far in terms of who will have the better push level one. Both teams will make an analysis. As soon as the game starts, as soon as they know the composition, say, who has the better level 1 push? And we'll say, if the enemy team has a better level 1 push, we will match their 4-man four, four lane, and we will rotate down there and just try to hold them back as long as possible. Complexity now picks Arthas, something that none of us expected to see. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, to clarify, let's talk a little bit about... Arthas, Sonia? Let's, uh, <laughs> let's talk Are a little going bit for it? <laughs> about history. Now, back in the day, Arthas actually had Envenom, and Arthas Kerrigan was a, one of the most popular Ronin com yeah, compositions in the game because you'd use the Primal Grasp with the Impale to lock them down, follow that with a Howling Blast out of Arthas, you spec into the double Envenom, and the target would actually just take a ton of burst damage. Uh, so, you know, having the Root of Malfurion, the Root of Arthas, the Polin of Kerrigan, Hydralisks d get their maximum damage when the target can't run away, and then Vala, which will likely be a hungering arrow build, unless they want to go have the additional lane clear beat from the multi-shot, I'm actually okay with this. <gasps> Take a breath. You can do it. Yeah. <laughs> Good point, though. Good point. So, uh, we actually saw them run this during North America June Open. They actually went Arthas Sonia. And it was fun. And they had an it insane amount of fun. I remember that Way first fight in the mines? Yeah. That first that fight huge, in the mines? They really just long fight. Decimated so the many team. people who were very, very low. Final pick. More damage. I think Vala also would have been a great target to fit into this composition. Who is left? Uh, Tychus? Yeah. So Tychus got that melting point. Like, that's uh, not bad. It's decent. Uh, I I don't know. There's not really that many great targets. It's, it's probably either Tychus or Kilthas. I almost feel like they need Sonya. something for disruption. Not Sonya. Sergeant Hammer. Get it. Get I would Sonya. actually like to see Double Warrior. I, I mean, as crazy as that is. Bird? Like, think of Bird? I think, yeah. I think that might be okay here. Uh, and if it's not, I think they need some kind of other dis disruption to stop the aggression from coming in when they see it happening. Maybe Tyrande. Uh, it's a weird pickup, but uh, y having the the Sentinel, um, or excuse me, the Lunar Flare. Nah, it's gonna be Tychus. It, it probably will be Tychus. <laughs> <laughs> or you know what? <sighs> I hate to make a case for Rainer. Okay, Double Warrior it is. So Material. Hmm. This is very uh, reminiscent of what the Team Blaze was running some time ago. Mm -hmm. Not in the same situation. They didn't really force out a double mage. But it is double blood for blood. Composition. That's 16 with those two warriors. Yep. That is true. A very two warriors that have it. And that's something that Arthas suffers from. Uh, he doesn't really have a whole lot to get away from. Uh, you think this will be Sindragosa? Because uh, it's Haunted Mines? I, I guess that last time they went on the Haunted Mines and they didn't end it. They took okay. Army of the Dead. Uh, we d I mean, when Tuark ran Arthas, that was something they did go. They did go for Sindragosa. didn't end up panning out that well for them. I believe it was actually up against the plays. Hmm. So, uh, I think, yeah, again, the last time they went for Army of the Dead, they just need that sustain. Provide a bit of control, a bit of a little AoE damage. Should be fun. Should be a fun game. Always cool to see Arthas popping back in. Yeah, man, the Lich, King, the Lich King just needs more love. He doesn't get played enough, and I'm glad to see a bit of resurgence on him here in the North American meta. Europe loves him. They and, do. And, um... Chinese scene loves him too. Chinese scene loves him too. So it's cool to see him actually starting to get played a bit here in North America. We're just about ready. One player is using the restroom quickly, and then this game will be underway. But could we look at these drafts? It's a bit a bit of a different draft out of complexity, but they have Kerrigan. What do you mm -hmm. think about it? Again, so the other thing is I mentioned this. Now that the drafts are complete, you have to analyze who has the better early game push. And since they went for Tyrael, he does have the shielding on the minions. Mm -hmm. Something to consider. Uh, the new rack with the Beatles. Who else was in there? 
had da, 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 Tassadar with one promote, but that's not really going to make a huge difference early game. Tassadar and Tyrael are two of the best defensive heroes in the game when it comes to just defending against a golem. And when we think about splitting up like 1v4 in the lanes, uh, Tassadar is always going to have a better defense than who anyone that Complexity decides to use. So it's going to be Vala uh, on the defense, yeah. which could mean a multi-shot build prioritized because of that. Right. Tassadar has a shielding and the side storm. So at this point, Complexity has the stronger push. Yep. Early game. Very early game. So I think plays will probably also analyze this. They will they will leave Tassadar in the top lane, like you mentioned. Or actually, they don't even need to. They could probably stick an Uberak up there, leave the others to defend. So I think the plays will be on the defensive up until the first opening of the mines. And we'll see which of the two teams is able to push out that bottom lane. Well, I guess it depends on which side they spawn on. But... Um, Whichever lane gets pushed out from complexity, and if one team has got them backed up against behind their fort, they will have the early game advantage to hop into the mines. Typically when that happens, we're seeing the other team, the one that was sort of defending, is forced to run to the opposite side. Kerrigan and Arthas are both on that graphic. Is that an omen? Sorry. An continue. omen. <laughs> an omen. <laughs> Um, but anyway, hard. so that, that'll be the case. They'll have to run to the other side. It just gives a nice advantage to e either of the aggressive teams. But we will see how it pans out. On the left side of the map, this will be for the plays. Pirate Rum is going to be solo defending in the top lane on Tassadar. The Zoos will be on Tyrael. Daihu on Anubarak. Aragi is going to be on Falstad. And Lex Uther on Uther. Oh my goodness. Well, on the bottom lane, it's going to be Trummel soloing that bottom lane, uh, trying to defend it from the push of complexity. Excuse me, the plays. But at the top, it's going to be Cattle, Blinks, Hans, and McIntyre. A lot of lockdown, Root, Root, Poland, you name it. It's all there. Are you rooting for complexity? Gotta I am. Got to use it one more time. <laughs> one more time. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, I love seeing uh, new names come out and have great results. So, love to see the plays bring it back here in this event. But Complexity, they're looking hot. They've got that Kerrigan with the massive combo potential. And already we see these towers start to take some damage. Yes, Blink's there to heal up. And, of course, Hans on the Zagara will be throwing down these constant summons to soak up the shots. And both teams are looking to just get as aggressive as possible. So... We'll keep tabs uh, at the current time. It looks as though complexity is a slight bit ahead. Trumbull, as we predicted, is sort of in the defensive posture for complexity. And I think if things continue going the way they are, we will see that complexity is the victor in terms of the early game push. Well, one tower down on the side of Cole, like you mentioned. The other one going down rather quickly. Trumbull doing his best, but the damage is going out on both sides. Level 10 has been reached. Level 2 has been <laughs> That was quick. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's just take a look at the talents because it's just kind of like a each team smashing their head on a rock opposing sides of the map. It's going to be yep. multi-shot build like we predicted. That's just to really help deal with the, the wave clear, and it's also going to be beneficial when it comes to going into the mines, uh, collecting those skulls. You just have, uh, once you have the arsenal and all the upgrades, just melt those uh, packs of yep. skeletons. And, of course, Zagara, we mentioned this, the corpse feeders, soaking up more damage from the non-heroic targets. Multi-shot build, I think it makes a lot of sense for this map in particular. Now, both teams have taken out the towers on their respective pushing lanes. Mm -hmm. What is the next play? Thus far, it looks like Complexity is looking to defend or at least have the posturing on the bottom lane to get into those mines sooner. They're trying to bully them both back so they can enter the mines first. Looks like most of the members of Complexity are going to enter the bottom portion of the mines. This is very risky for Caterpillar. Uh, he's buying as much time as he can. That's actually not the worst play in the world. Yes, it False gives the head start. For up here. Even if you buy just a couple seconds for your team to get to. Oh, the root is such a great play. I like this. This is cool. Just a very particular thing. But, but it gives the first set of uh, skulls. You get that first 20 set of uh, skulls right away. And uh, Caterpillar didn't end up getting punished for this type of strategy. And actually, now they're kind of guarding the gate. Yeah. And uh, the gate's heavy rotation. right now. And it is closed. They're starting to wrap around. McIntyre is going to try to drink, jump over to Pirate Rum, pull him in with that uh, combo, and it's actually going to be successful. It's going to be the first takedown of the game. Zeus being bullied back by this Hydralisk. Great positioning of Bi Complexity. They do have the level 4 talents. More upgrades here for the multi shot. We do have that protective shield. That can make big plays if they do get caught in a team fight down a level. The Envenom as well. If McIntyre gets a pull onto Zeus, this could be very scary. I think that's going to be the target. He wraps up around. Oh, he's not going to be able to survive. There's no way. Yep. He gets taken out. 
And he won't even be able to get any value. Except for Hans who just walks in. No. Okay. <laughs> Lex Uther going down wow. as well in this bottom corner. That is a three for nothing. Almost a half level lead at this point in time. Mm. And we do have a slight skull advantage. That's the one thing that going for the place. They say, did yeah. get 44 of them. Through the all this scuffling, they did manage to get a fair amount of skulls. More than you would expect considering the three to zero takedown advantage. It will still be an advantage skull by just a little bit. Skull them. Skull him, man. That's, that's good. That is a great one. Man, I'm so <laughs> proud of you. That's <laughs> oh, so talented. So, All right. Blink's going to have to just keep on doing Ring Around the Rosie here. That is going to be Rosie. 60. We're just full of it today. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say Ring Around the Rosie? Ring Around the Rosie. All right. These long casts get rough, boys. We're seven hours in? Yeah. Yeah. Seven hours in with, with uh, just small breaks between. But we will power through. And succeed. All right, right now Kerrigan is going to start working on these giants. Again, they would delay the collection of that mercenary camp until the golem does pass just about mm -hmm. the, the line, right past the four. Going to be the same for both teams. So despite the early game pressure advantage, I would say at least in terms of pushing out lanes, Complexity has not really found themselves at a huge advantage in terms of experience. They do have a slight skull lead for their golem, and they're pushing out their lane a little bit further. And then again, you have to reevaluate at this point in time if an even golem is acquired for either team, like which Pet team is pushing out a really good wow charge that was completely baited out. McIntyre then showed himself comboing him. Next level plays by complexity. Wow. Okay, and that's you know that's a big part of the defense, of course, is Nubarak. Uh, this might mean a heavy aggression. Oh, Trumbull can't get caught by that. Did they cap the Giants deal. early? That's interesting. Uh, they did opt to do that. It yeah. allowed them to make this aggressive play, I suppose. But yeah, this golem starting to whack away at the top for the bottom golem Ooh. is actually getting there a little bit more quickly. Are they taking bruisers or are they looking to punish? They are looking to punish. And you know, good good on the plays to recognize that some of the members disappeared. But this is McIntyre. This is Caterpillar as well. That's a lot of lockdown between the two heroes. McIntyre just sort of uh, leaping over the wall. He might be overextended a little bit. He did tap the well, though. So he's got a bit of a buffer. Is it enough? False edge jumping on in the heels and the shields do come out. That stop is going to be devastating. He will end up falling to the golem. Yeah, and the, the damage output from the Terial Ghost is going to sort of put Caterpillar a little bit on the back foot. He does have, of course, the Mortal Coil to keep himself alive. And all of a sudden, I think this advantage that was going the way of complexity is turned around quickly for the Yeah, players. I mean, you talk about how good Tassadar is for defending. We mentioned this earlier. He has shielding for the structures. And that's something that no other hero has, right? You can spec in the mule, and he did exactly that. Malfur and also doing the same. But Malf can't use regrowth on structures. That's not a thing. Right. Right, right, right. So the mule actually is going to get zero value for either side at this point in time. Just a little bit on those towers, maybe regening some of the ammunition. And again, we hit this sort of awkward time until about eight minutes into the game when the next set of mines spawn. Who is going to get this small advantage that you could possibly get in the mercenary camps, the space between the two lanes? The bruisers will go the way of complexity. I don't think they'll be able to turn this into a four advantage in the bottom lane unless they get some takedowns early. And they have the aggressive potential to do so, especially with McIntyre Caterpillar. The pole, that might, oh, the oh, great cleanse. Man. Excellent cleanse yeah. from Lex Uther. Big, that was a big deal because he was uh, going to fall for sure at that point if he didn't uh, get that cleanse. But they're not done yet marching in towards this bottom four. They do have a, a, almost a, a level lead at this point in time. Yeah. If they can really get another takedown, they'll have level 10. That's why they're continuing with this posturing on the bottom four. Now, another thing we didn't actually consider is that uh, McIntyre on Kerrigan, is, it's a very mana starved hero. And Innervate, man. Yeah, yeah Innervate's uh, right, a nice right. for that. Right, that's I still would that's prefer to have the uh, you know, burst healing potential out of some of the other oh. heroes, but that's that's a little bit of a the synergy with the root and the, the yeah you got the root it's 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 not bad you got the root you have the mule as well available yeah I, I'm so. okay with this pick so but all things considered right now I mean complexity uh, looking good they're going to be just cleaning up their top lane making sure they're safe they do have that level ten advantage surprise they're not really trying to capitalize on it but cattle just constantly keeping a bit of a threat in this bottom lane it's kind of scary if, if you throw these fights like right before the mines open ugh. even though they do have that level ten advantage like you can really throw the game away completely if you lose a single fight right before the mines open they know they have the positional advantage just get into the mines 
soak up, maybe set up a, a yeah. nice trap there. They're, the they're looking side. to actually do just that. Daihu enters alone, and they're just waiting for more members. All five have made it into the mines. Daihu getting very low right now. Kerrigan has not used the combo. Maw hitting a single target. The Tranquility keeping them alive. Complexity oh. with a big combo, but the Judgment is actually going to take out Kerrigan. Yes, Trouble is forced to use the Strafe. Will get a lot of value on it. I think that Daihu might actually end up falling. No, he's actually going to be fairly safe between the rest of the members of his team if Hans or Blinks are able to get to the other side. Caterpillar knows they need to be able to take this takedown. Zeus wanted to as well. Fire. No, the root is good, and he will be taken down. Okay, so it's going to be a trade two for three in favor yeah. of Complexity at this point. Complexity does take a slight lead, but they're starting to collect these uh, skulls and Complexity with the ad the additional members. It's actually going to be a pretty even golem at this yeah. rate. Also, the first hero that ended up falling in the fight was uh, Kerrigan. She will get herself back to the mines uh, just yeah. a little bit sooner, and this might actually put Uragi in a really bad spot. Does have the barrel roll, but he just flew aggressively. He did. So, I mean, Hydra is out here. Lex Uther trying to make a case to keep him alive, but McIntyre says, none of that. Dash and forward. Primal Quest just uh. out of reach. No yeah. sprint yet, not level 13. Can't quite get it. It's the pull's going to have to be immediate. I don't think yeah, they can't go for it. They have to wait until he's out and wait for the, the next set of uh, roots, the Primal Grasp. Not, oh, they're going to be able to get it onto Uther, and he body blocked. Even if he was able to cleanse himself out of that position, yeah. the, the body blocks are more than enough to hold him there. All right. All right. 36 to 32, very even in terms of the skull count. We do see a nice positioning on that scouting drone. Going to reveal the Nubarak as he steps into that range. They're starting on the boss. This will be down a single hero, but looking at the heroics, uh, while well they have Judgment and yep. Archon. They do. So we got to talk a little bit about that last fight. It was a great attempt. I liked the, the pull that was hit by Kerrigan, but then the follow-up with the Judgment. And that really broke up so much in that team fight. Had that Judgment not hit, it would have been a devastating fight for Complexity. And there goes that judgment once more, focusing on the character and hitting the last nice. boss. Gonna be successful in eliminating here very quickly. The stomp from that boss, hitting only that one player, Inubarak, who falls very quickly. Cattle with the side storm, gonna trade out with uh, Serial, and that's Pirate Rum also falling. Beautiful positioning on that straight. Wow, I can't believe that. Yes, that was just a new Barak staying alive for so long. But the follow-up Trommel is out of mana. Something to consider, especially once the Searing attacks. That's a big reason this might actually be a huge cleanup for the plays. He has the Divine Shield. They're going to go in. I think that he has enough mana to be able to take out yeah. Haragi. Yeah, and that's going to be actually a solid cleanup for the plays. All right, the plays making it happen. Blinks is going to collect this one school, but that will reveal his positioning. If they notice this, they could actually chase him down. He's going to try to find a safe place to hearth, opting for this location will be okay to do so. Kerrigan, just checking out the top lane, pushing it back. Yep. Golem in favor of the plays. Oh, no, Complex. Excuse uh, me. Complexity, Complexity got the stronger golem, and taking the giant camp isn't as impactful as it would be early game. There's no way to really position it in a way that it will help to defend against the golem, but having that extra merc camp pressure uh, is really nice. Yeah, yeah, you can see they realize that right there. It's like, well, I don't, I don't think it's going to be able to march up in that direction. Nah, it's not going to help too much. All right, well, no. remember, both teams have a mule, but Tassadar does have that superior defense advantage. It looks like complexity. They want to get aggressive here. Of course, Kerrigan can pull enemy heroes over the wall. They can lock, they can line up that root, line up the Howling Blast, and that's why we have Uther with the cleanse readily available. Okay, and they okay since so they forced out the uh, burrow charge from Daihu. That was the one hero that they might have been able to lock off the fight, oh! but a really good pull, and they weren't able to follow that up with the howling blast. The, but still, the boss route almost connected there yeah. too. It's so scary fighting under an enemy boss like this on the opposing side. The boss is marching in uncontested. The mule doing its best to. to Keep it alive. Hinderless Blast will be completely Hearts with nice see. jukes. Yes, okay. And this is, again, the boss continuing to get a lot of pressure. The boss on the other side of the map has not even been able to take out the wall just yet. Looks as though Complexity will be able to force a lot of an advantage. We do see the Divine Shield is thrown up on Deterial to keep him alive. Has not used his Judgment. There it is. He's going in there hoping to make something off of this. Trouble is able to back out. Getting the Strafe on oh point. No. Able to hit a lot of heroes. Zeus, has he overextended? Yes, we have to watch the Deterial Ghost. Wow! Provide a lot of kills. Retarded. Yes, McIntyre is able to be taken out. Trouble, very low. Yeah, even though McIntyre fell, he fell after hitting three targets with that Primal Grass combo. Daihu Burr charging back into that meant the Hall of Storms. And on the other side of the map, we see the boss did make it through the wall, but this keep will still stand. Yes, and a mule is available for both sides, so always going to favor the team that was able to successfully take down the structure. Uh, defending against the golem, and now the golem for complexity has reached the core, not able to scratch it at this point in time. Map control going the way of complexity, just for a moment, they have the level advantage too. Mm. Level 16, yeah. not too far away. It's really not. I mean, less than a level away from 16, and that's 
it's it's going to be very difficult to uh, fight with that talent disadvantage when it does happen. So that's going to give Complexity a lot of control over the battlefield to try to make an aggressive play. But Trouble just needs to make sure he doesn't get caught out of position. Both teams posturing around the one and only objective remaining on the map, these bruisers in the center. Mm. Very, very good point. So both, I mean, I'd say right now the advantage is for sure going in terms of map control. I think they can successfully take this. They know. The players knows that this is happening, especially they hit tab. They can see that siege damage going up, and they are going to be able to hold this point oh. for just a second. Daihu getting on, wants to bully this out. Hatrelly's blast will hit just three targets. That's quite a bit. Cattle falling very low. The Divine Shield keeping that Tyrael safe. The Judgment from point blank range onto trouble. Two heroes picked up. That advantage has been thrown away, and those bruisers were stolen by the plays. You know what the big difference was? Is that Hinterland's blast. It was, man. They hit just about every single member of Complexity. Just due to like, the geography and where they were forced to retreat from, there was nowhere else for them to go. McIntyre now backed up and looks as though the plays want to even this advantage out of the complexity oh, structure. Oh. That's a huge maw. That will set up McIntyre to hit with the roots on top of that. This could oh be devastating. Oh my goodness. Look at the damage Maelstrom in the face. But McIntyre is getting blown up oh, rather so quickly. Close. Tranquility not going to be enough. AoE damage coming out. The keep does fall and they can back on out. I can't. Wow, that was so close. That was either going to be a massive fight for complexity or a keep for the plays. Turns out that it was the latter. Still, though, well done. The Maw was on point. So very close. But again, that was, in fact, a 3v5 fight. Do they catch a Ragi? Not quite. Just going to barely miss that. The Golems, or the Skull, spawning in just about five seconds. Falside going to be able to fly back into battle. They're going for this? I can't believe this. Well, they at least force out the prescience. Yeah, yeah. the prescience for, for Pirate Rum. Caterpillar looking to put some pressure on the zoos. All of a sudden, it kind of just feels like complexity has the ability to take a fight. They yeah, but if they get too the aggressive, they're yeah, not right. really postured for this. Bala's not anywhere near them. Yeah, She's collecting that's skulls. Be bad. They're going to lose Malfurion very early in this battle. Cattle, Hans, both going to end up falling. Oh! A big uh, blast coming out there from Falstead. Ooh, that was a big mistake from complexity. Yeah, there's just a bit of miscommunication. We talked about the fact that Fala was sort of out of position, and Kerrigan not even in the mines at that point in time. So they keep, keep trying to take these 3v5s. They're just not really working out. You know, in theory, they never should really work out. Uh, even if you hit that huge maw into uh, the giant maelstrom, the pole, everything, it's just not going to be enough damage most of the time. Wow, uh, Aragi is is here, and if Trumbull did continue, they're trying to end the game. They're marching in. They oh. don't even need the boss. They're going to try to end. But oh, I they're think just trying to force them back. Yeah, uh, I don't know. This is interesting. They could have collected the rest of the skulls and, and been okay, and they should still be able to do that, but guess what? The entire team is almost back up here for complexity, and they should contest them at the boss. Always seems kind of interesting. The team that loses the team fight in the mines is the ones that end up collecting more of the skulls, at the least in the beginning portion of it. You're right, though. The next contention point will be over this boss. This should net the plays, the advantage golem. In fact, it will. Either yeah. way, as long as they're able to continue taking it down. You know, we get this far into the game. Uh, you can take those bo uh, boss golems down. Only, only Hinterland Blast is down. Every other heroic is available. Yep. Complexity looping around. They throw down a nice scouting drone. Going to try to get a big root uh, somewhere. But no, they're not actually committing. Trouble. Lex Uther is the only one really going to get picked off here. Yeah, and they should be able to follow this up. Does not have enough mana. And if McIntyre is able to follow that up, I does have the cleanse still available. Got to keep that in mind. There's yeah, the cleanse. Is able to get himself out. No, no, the pull is actually able to pull him away. Daihu going to fall also, and we see a big strafe being used here. Not sure if Vault is available. Doesn't look like it. Two members down. Actually, Complexity could just try to push in at the core. They're going to be marching down mm. this top lane. Catapult's already <gasps> here. The that's Golem big. is spawning, and that's going to be four Skull Golem. I think they have this game. I they think they do, too. That, that one pickup right at the yeah. end with Tassadar falling is a big deal. Caterpillar is still alive. They do still have their support. Malfurion is nearby. Zoo is going, and I don't know if that's going to be able to do enough. We have the it's blast able to hit trouble back but they both have spell shield active wow. that is huge what a back and forth game complexity will advance 2-0 over the plays in a very back and forth game on haunted mines Man, they keep taking these games like all of a sudden out of nowhere they're just, like, they had a very strong early game I'm not yeah, going to deny that yeah, but the but fact that the plays were able to uh, take the mid game very convincingly this far and it's just like okay uh, things are starting to battle back they were threatening to even push at the core forcing them back and then they know it's it's almost like Temple Storm Esther. It's just like they take this win. They're like, all right, yeah, we'll just go Let's win go. the game. Let's, Let's go. go win the game. We got this. Well played. They just kind of split up at the end in the mines. They yeah. they picked them off. Three heroes, more than enough, with the golem yeah. spawning as they were at the door. I was surprised the they were able to clean up that many. Yeah. I thought it would just be Lex Uther taking the fall, and that would have been salvageable for the plays. Yeah. The fact that you know uh, Tyrael was able to get cleaned up and Tassadar, that's what really spelled the disaster for plays at the end.
Uh, very well played by Complexity. Well, we can actually pull up the bracket, maybe. Hello. Yeah. And we can see that the plays will be advancing to face against Cloud9 Maelstrom in the lower bracket finals. Now, this will be the second to last match.